Let's get into this. Galatians chapter 3 is really the gospel, and verse 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Can we read this out loud together? Just the only, this is the only one I'm going to ask you to do this, but we got to honor the gospel, all right? Here's, here's what it says. Say it with me. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who's hung on a pole. He redeemed us, that's Christ, in order that the blessing, say the blessing, the blessing given to Abraham might come to us through, praise the Lord. That's the gospel. The gospel takes us from curses to blessings. That's what Jesus came to do. That's why he died on the cross for us. Now, Last Sunday, Pastor Jordan did a great job in a message called Seven Blessings I Need, and he gave the first four of that list of seven, and I'm going to continue that list today. Uh, The list of blessings that we're looking at is in Deuteronomy 28, the first 14 verses. I really encourage you to read that whole 28th chapter. It's an an eye-opener, but there are seven kinds of blessings, seven categories of blessings listed that we have summarized in this list of seven, exaltation or being lifted up, reproductiveness or capacity, health, prosperity. These are the four that Pastor Jordan covered. And then the ones we're looking at today are victory, head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We're going to look at what does that biblical language mean and how is it relevant for us in our everyday life and our nasty now and now? How are these phrases powerful for us? And, and here's what I want to say. I want to be the kind of a Christian that values the blessing. Do you value the blessings of God? I mean, is it Is it important to you? More important maybe than sports or career or romance or entertainment or music or do you do you value like treasure, like like diamonds, like gold, the blessing? Because once the blessing of God comes on your life, man, you've got it all. But if you don't have the blessing of God, you you don't have anything. I'm thinking this morning of the story of uh, Jacob and Esau, that Old Testament story where Jacob, who was the second born, he was a twin, and the, the first one in the Old Testament, the first born always had the double portion blessing. This was very important in ancient Israel. And Jacob did not have that by birthright. Esau, his twin brother, had it, and one day Jacob talked Esau out of his blessing by giving him basically a bowl of chili. Remember that? He was hungry. And uh, he said, I got this chili for you, man. And Esau said, I'm starving. And he said, well, give me your blessing. I'm not giving you my blessing. Then you're not getting my chili. All right, I'll give you my blessing. What good is my blessing? What good is my blessing, Esau said, if I'm starving? And so Jacob got the blessing and Esau lost it. And it says in the book of Hebrews that Esau sought it Tearfully later, he regretted that he had sold his birthright, the blessing, and it says he couldn't get it back. You know, the blessing of God. Can we say this on a Sunday? We need the blessing of God in our life. We need to value this. I want the blessing of God upon my children. I want the blessing of God upon my marriage. I want the blessing of God upon my business. I want the blessing of God upon my health. I want the blessing of God upon my soul. I value it. I need it. I want it. I got to have it. I can't live without it. And God's comment about Jacob, even though he was snookering his brother, which is not a nice thing to do, but but God said, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. What is he saying? He's saying, I love those that love me. I love those that value my blessing on their life. How many of you value the blessing of God on your life. I could, like, you want that. I mean, that's the heart that we need. The heart that just says, I just, I don't want to do anything to, to undermine God's blessing in my life. 
and I, I want to do everything I can. I'll give, I'll pray, I'll read my Bible, I'll serve, I'll forgive, I'll do whatever I need to do to stay in the blessing zone. Because if I'm, if I'm blessed, I'm, I'm indestructible. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that I'll never have a hard day or I'll never go through hard times, but I know I can face whatever comes if I know God is for me and he's, his blessing resides on my life. And if I can believe that about my children and my grandchildren, if I can believe that about you, if I, if I could say to you, hey, if you've got the blessing of God, you're going to be fine. You're going to make it. If I marry a couple and I sense the blessing of God upon that, man, they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. Value above anything in your life. The blessing of God. The favor of God. Let's get into this. Um, I do want to mention that it, it was so important what Pastor Jordan said, and I want to read this last, this one more verse, Deuteronomy chapter 28, because he was making the point, and, it, and I, it, since we're kind of continuing this message, I want to repeat it. That, that the blessings of God are, are gifts, but they depend on, they rest upon our faithfulness and our obedience. So, so the blessing of God is not random. Now, I want to say this to you. You can't earn the blessing of God by saying a prayer or giving an offering or doing a good deed or being a part of a ministry. You can't earn the blessing of God. Blessing of God is not for sale. But what you can do is show God that you're making the effort and you're positioning yourself. So you're not earning anything, but you're positioning yourself in the best light to receive God's blessing. And God says, you know, look at, look at my daughter. Look at my son. He is really in there trying. He's earnest. He wants it. He cares. He's doing his part. I'm going to bless him. So... It's not that you can earn salvation. You can't. You can't earn the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can't earn the presence of God. But you can position yourself to receive those things. And if you're out of position, you you won't experience the fullness of God's blessing. So look at what he says in Deuteronomy 28. He says, now, this is our chapter, by the way. That's that big chapter that's got all the blessings and all the curses. And he starts it off this way. The Lord says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord. God wants to be heard in your life. He wants you to listen. Diligently obey the Lord to observe carefully all of his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you're listening up. You're hearing God. And you're doing what he says, and every parent knows this. We love our children when they're obedient, and we love them when they're disobedient, but man, they are positioned for blessing when they are obedient and listening. That's when the goodies come, man. That's when the rewards come. That's when we're getting along just fine. How many understand what I'm talking about? And God says, look, I've got a will for your life. I've got a way for your life. There's a direction that I'm giving you. I'm not giving it for me, he says. I'm giving it for your benefit. I'm asking you to do this. Do it this way. Because when you do it this way, you're going to be blessed. So it's not that you can earn God's blessing. We don't believe that. God loves you for nothing. But he blesses you when you position yourself, when you pay attention, and when you follow his way. Does that make sense? Okay, so all of that to say, and I want to get to blessing number five, number six, and number seven. But before I do that, I just got to read a quick letter that I received not too long ago uh, about this whole topic of blessing and cursing. It was after, actually after the first message. And it says, Pastor David, while I was listening to you, I felt the Holy Spirit was showing me a thread of events in my life where Christian people knowingly or unknowingly spoke things to me that would really hurt, and I didn't know why. They were things that I would never say to them. 
but I thought I was supposed to receive them even if it didn't seem right. I would try to forgive them, but the hurt was still there. How many have ever experienced something like that? So, and then she says, he showed me in the message that a curse had been spoken into my life as a young person from a Christian who I thought I was supposed to listen to. Remember when I said in the first message, if you, if, if you weren't here, go back on YouTube and get caught up with these messages because we're, we're baking a cake here. We're, we're building something. This isn't random. We're doing it brick by brick. And we started off by talking, defining what blessing is, defining what curses are, and the fact that Christians, even according to James, the book of James, Christians can speak curses to each other just as easily as they can speak. And I didn't, I'm not talking about curse words like profanity. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you say something to a fellow Christian or you say something about a fellow, I hope they get what's coming to them. Or nothing they do is going to succeed. Or, or whatever, whatever random hurtful thing that we say. Those words have a charge on them. It's like an electrical uh, current and it, and James says, Christians, why are we doing this? In one minute, we're praising God, blessing the Lord, and in the next moment, we're cursing people that are made in the image of God. This ought not to be. Out of the same mouth, out of the same Christian mouth, proceed, what does he say? Blessings and cursing. So we have to be so careful. This is what this lady, so it says, she showed me a curse had been spoken into my life as a young person from a Christian who I thought I was supposed to listen to. So she received it. She, she accepted it, right? I had opened up to him and I wanted to know what God was calling me to do. He was very unkind and said that God wasn't calling me to do anything and that I and my family didn't matter. So this is a person in a position of authority, counseling or speaking, whatever the context was, your family is nothing. And you don't matter. And, and this woman struggled with this her whole adult life. This happened in childhood. Sunday, I went up for prayer, she said, and broke the curse. <laughs> I forgave the people who have spoken certain things to me since that time, and I am free. All right. Blessing is real. It is. And cursing is real also. We have to be so careful when we're in positions of authority as parents or spiritual leaders or just even to a brother or sister that we would speak something. We are kings and priests. The words that come out of a king's mouth, the words that come out of a priest's mouth have authority. And you are a king and a priest, so use your pie hole <laughs> to bless, right, amen? Use your pie hole to speak life and that which will bring edification and and we all fail in this. We, we, we have all said things and done things we shouldn't do. We've made many, many mistakes. May God forgive us. And when you go to somebody, if you have been harsh with someone or you have spoken unkindly about them, you need to take it back. Can, can I, I'll just tell you this. My wife said something a few years back and I said, take it back. Take it back. And she said, okay, I take it back. Because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a godly thing that she said. And I've done the same thing. Sometimes you need to take that back and say, I withdraw that harsh judgment. I withdraw that thing that I said to you, that, that word. I regret that. May, that. may that be broken over your life. And I tell you, if we do this within our families, within our church, within our relationships, we're gonna have such health, such um, 
Such life. Are you getting anything out of this? Because I haven't even gotten to my notes yet. I'm all, I'm all wound up because I couldn't come to church last Sunday. I got sick and I, I got full of God while I was sick. Okay. <laughs> all right, let me give you these seven blessings. This is number five, six, and seven. You ready? Number five. God has promised you victory over your enemies. Now, why would I need victory? Who has enemies? What's this mean? Deuteronomy 28, verses six and seven, unpacks it wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They'll attack you from one direction and they'll scatter from you in seven. Well, I don't really have enemies. Like, I'm not like, that guy's my enemy. I, you probably don't have enemies, but there probably are people and there are definitely demons that are against you. You have spiritual enemies, right? Now, if I, ha- if I have an enemy in my neighborhood or so, you know, somebody that's you know, causing me a problem or, or whatever it is, I'm, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bless those that curse me. Yes. That's so important. Yeah. Jesus said, bless and do not curse. Right? So I'm going to bless and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, I know what to do. But there are spiritual enemies that attack you and want to defeat you. They want to defeat your mood. They want to defeat your, uh, your progress. They want to undercut your, your spiritual life, your spiritual growth. You can have enemies that would attack your health and attack your finances. And there's so many ways to be attacked. And we have to understand that when, when the blessing of God is on us, it doesn't mean we won't be attacked. Listen very carefully. You've done nothing wrong because you were attacked. It's not a sin to be attacked. It's not a deficiency in your life that you were attacked. God loves you, and that makes you a target, right? So God, God the enemy wants to hurt anything and everything that God loves and values. So... The fact that Christ came to give us victory, that Jesus came to break the curse of being defeated constantly and and put us into a life of victory, that's what this verse is talking about. What does it mean for us to have victory in Christ? It means that as a believer in Jesus, you are identified and included in Christ's victory over sin, death, hell, and all evil. It means that you have the power to overcome every challenge in life, not because of your personal effort, not because of your own strength, not because of your great super spirituality. That is not why you have the victory. You have the victory because you are in Christ and Christ is in you. You are on the right team. The minute you opened your life to Christ, the minute you welcomed Christ in your life, you received the victor. And when you received the victor, you got victory because victory lives on the inside of you. Your victory is not about how your day went or how your week went or who likes you or who doesn't like you. The victory is in you. You cannot be defeated. You can have a hard day, you can have hard times, and we all have those times, and man, if you just look back, you could see probably in your life, as I could see in my life, months and months of struggles and battles and fights, and, and uh, maybe 2024 was a year when you were just fighting and fighting and struggling and just trying to get the victory. I want you to understand something. You are not fighting for victory, you are fighting from a place of victory. So you are being attacked because you are in victory and you cannot be defeated. Here's what I want to say to you. Don't quit. The only way you can lose is if you quit and walk off the the battlefield and say, that's it, I can't take it anymore. Don't you do it. Because if you hold fast, if you hold your place, even when it feels like you're just getting hammered and you're just like, you know, you're, you're Tyson and the devil is Jake Paul, <laughs> right? You hold your ground because the fight in this case is fixed. 
If God is for you, who can be against you? Can I just read some scripture to you this morning if you, if you, if you feel like you're defeated? What shall we say then, Romans 8 says, about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and he was raised to life for us and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from God's love? Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? The scriptures say, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, say it with me, everybody, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. I'm not talking about a squeaker victory like you won by one point in overtime. It's an overwhelming victory. It's a blowout. It's a... It's a thrashing. You are in victory because you are in Christ. Jesus came to bring you victory in your life. Will you receive it? Will you receive it? Number six, God has promised that you'll be a leader and not a mere follower. These are the promises of Deuteronomy 28. These are the promises that Jesus came to bring us. So, man, I value this. I'm going to be a leader and not just a mere follower. So, so, so many people say, ah, I'm not a leader. I'm, I'm not a leader. I'm just along for the ride. No. You are a leader. What do you mean, Pastor? Because the promise is the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. Why would you ever want to be the tail if you could be the head? What's the difference between the head and the tail? Well, the head decides where to go. And the tail just gets dragged along for the ride. Okay. Some of you, you have adopted a passive lifestyle. Whoever pulls on you the hardest, that's the direction you go. Whatever happens to you, that's just how your life goes. Whatever comes your way, you just go with it. But that is, that's a cursed life. That's not a life of blessing. A life of blessing is actually being in charge of what happens. Now, you're not in charge of every circumstance, but you're in charge of how you respond to that circumstance. You get to choose in the storm to trust God and hold your position. You can't control the storm. It came. But you don't have to be blown away by the storm. You don't have to be drowned by the storm. You can stand and say, bring it. I'm talking to this storm in Jesus' name. I release the authority of Jesus Christ against this storm. Peace be still. And I will not quit and I will not be washed away. And I will trust the sun is going to shine again. I'm going to live and I'm not going to die. This storm is not going to last forever. I'm strong in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's head and not the tail. Can I ask you, who's in charge? Are you just, is life in charge of you or are you in charge of life? Which way are you going to have it? You're the head and not the tail. If you've ever struggled with a, a relationship, I had a, I had a person say to me recently, I just feel like I'm so defeated in relationships. And I said, Set the level of your marriage. 
Set the level of your friendships. Don't let what they're doing determine where it's going to be. You love them. You bless them. You serve them. And watch what happens in those relationships. That's called leadership. You're not just accepting what happens in life. You're setting the level. Now, I know the music is playing. I understand what time it is. <laughs> but I'm the head and not the tail. <laughs> I, I can finish this. I can finish this. You want number seven? Okay. Because <laughs> you value the blessing. I don't think you value it enough, though. I think I'll give it to you next week. No, I'll give it to you today. God has promised you divine favor. What did he say in Deuteronomy 28? He said, you'll always be on top and not on bottom. That means favor. That means, you know, and, and you get favor by having a relationship with Jesus. It's not, and it, again, it doesn't mean everything's going to go perfect for you. You're going to get every job you apply for and, you know, you're going to win the lottery every time you put a dollar down at 7-Eleven or whatever. Uh, no. But it means you're going to be above and, and not suffocating underneath on top of just eating the crumbs or whatever, whatever falls down to the bottom. You're going to be surfing on top of the wave, not crushed by it. You're going to be soaring above the storm, not grounded by it. See? God's favor will lift you out of trouble. I could tell you so many times in my life that I've been in trouble. And I, I walk in God's favor. I can't, I mean, I'm not going to say that I, the favor of God does but I've had dark days. Walking in favor doesn't mean you're not going to have dark days. It means you're going to come out on the other side and you're going to be okay. What would have killed you just made you stronger. The favor of God. So here's what I want us to do today. If you have Jesus, you have these seven blessings. These are blessings that you need. These are blessings that you value, and there's so many more. I mean, these are just kind of like categories of blessings. There's a thousand ways you can be blessed. If you really want to step into the blessing of God through faith in Jesus, I just want you to stand to your feet. We're going to close the service, and uh, don't do it if you're not interested, but if you're interested, if this is something that you want, you want the blessing of God on your life? And I'm going to speak that over you. That in the storm, that in the trial, in the difficulty, it's going to be different for you from today forward. That because of Jesus and because you are in Christ and because Christ is in you, you're walking in the high places, not the low places. You're the head and not the tail. You're in a position of victory because of Jesus. Now, I'm going to use my words and my authority. Really, I mean, that's just icing on the cake because if you have Jesus, you have the blessing. The blessing comes from him. But also, the blessing can come from people in authority. And uh, I want you to close your eyes and I want, you to, I want you to know something here today. God's face is shining on you. He's not turning his face away from you. He loves you. You're his child. You're his pride and joy. Have you made mistakes? Sure, so have I. But he loves you. He cares about you. And he's for you. And he says to you today, if you'll hear his voice and value his direction in your life, as I'm positive that you do, that days of blessing are ahead for you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you and I relieve you of every curse, every curse that was spoken over you as a child, every curse that may have lived in your family line. I break its power through faith in Jesus Christ. And I impart to you the favor of God, the victory of God, the above and not beneath, 
the head and not the tail. I impart to you fruitfulness, joy, capacity. I impart to you hope and the blessing and the favor of Almighty God because of Christ who loves you and died for your sins. Receive now the blessing of God. Lift your hand and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed and I cannot be cursed. Come on. Come on, say it like you mean it. I'm blessed and I cannot be cursed. I am in Christ and Christ is in me. Praise the Lord. Give Jesus a hand clap.